20 foolproof ways to ruin a job interview according to reddit number 20 showed up late reeked of marijuana and asked if the drug test was optional immediately after introducing himself well I guess being an idiot's probably going to be the the theme of this list. And there you go. Number 19. Asked the guy if he had experience with Linux, which was required for the job and stated in the job advertisement. He said kind of because he was using an Android phone and that would pretty much be the same. Oh man. Oh, man. These are probably going to be pretty quick. Considering this is what we have to work with. Number 18. She posted the email from our company and several others requesting a follow-up interview on her Instagram with the caption, Damn, all these bitches want a piece of me. What the fuck? Well, yeah. What an idiot, though. What an idiot, though. Number seven, teen. He told me that he'd do anything for us if he got the job. Even if it was illegal? That was a major red flag. Yeah, you gotta know who you're talking to saying shit like that. If he hadn't said it, he probably would have been in the running for the job, too. Another guy kept stopping to answer his phone during the interview? Once, okay. He forgot to turn it off, but he just left it on and kept texting his friend. He also said he liked to solve problems through brainstorming and that he'd find ways not to work overtime even if there was an emergency. When asked about his work experience, he talked about how in role in how his role in projects was to make himself the delegator dude really didn't want to work. Then there was this gal who tossed her head and said, You know, you think you're interviewing me, but I'm the one interviewing you. And this job is beneath me. Call me when you have something good available. Oh. Okay. You wouldn't believe the bad applicants that somehow make it into these interviews. Well, you can't know crazy till you meet it, baby. How can you know crazy before you meet it? Ooh. I feel like the new version of looking a a gift horse in the mouth is looking a a, a man with a wig <laughs> in the in the eyeballs in his interview, like you're interviewing for I don't know a woman who can carry a baby to term. And, and, and then a dude shows up and he's like, let's get this interview underway, okay? <laughs> so you want my womb, do you? Oh my god. <laughs> Number 16. Woo! Recently I had to interview someone who was a man in his mid-50s. His interview was with two women. They got about three questions in when they stopped the interview. They asked him a question about how he handles customer conflict we are a customer service company, and he had customer service experience. He said that he didn't tolerate difficult customers, and that he would, quote, kick them out of the store. Okay. Then they asked him about handling employee conflict, and he said something along the lines of, Well, you have to handle conflict with women differently, because they are more emotional and have trouble understanding more complicated concepts, right? I left my last job because they hired too many women and I couldn't stand working with them. Too many women. Uh, to two women. He said this to two women who was interviewing him. So clearly this guy had no social awareness or concept of what was appropriate. So uh, don't don't do that. Don't don't do that. Ooh, it's when you lack self. Ooh. Oh my god, there's an episode of The Simpsons in my fucking playlist. I apologize. Ooh. 
I was trying to look for it earlier because I saw, oh God, yeah, don't worry about that. What a, I'm a normal guy, you know, <laughs> I'm a normal guy with a playlist that I play these songs on. And sometimes a Simpsons episode ends up in a playlist. You know what I'm talking about? My God, you know, <sighs> maybe somebody finds it charming and goes to my wish list. Okay. Look, don't do that in an interview. I would have loved to be there for that interview, but it wasn't in my own department. So I just got to hear about it from the women that interviewed him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello to everybody in the stream chat. Here's hoping you're having a wonderful evening and that it just gets better and better. Romeo, Hannah, Linda, Prelude, um, Bocanfuso, uh-huh, Anderson, um, Prelude, Coda Poppin. May y'all take it easy. You know what I'm talking about? Taking it easy, Hold up. Hmm. I wonder if they could get out. I don't think they can. We'll talk about it later. I have prisoners of the fly variety. Oh, those bastard flies will learn to think twice before fucking with me now. <laughs> and I'm also out 40 bucks. God damn it. Number 15. I kind of was on the other side of this. But when I was fresh out of college, I applied for a manager position at a retail store. The store hadn't opened yet. And they basically wanted to hire someone to do everything. From setting up the store, getting it ready to open, to setting prices, doing inventory, buying merchandise, planning weekend events, the grand opening was the first of these. Uh, what the bing bong? Anyway, it was the group interview at the owner's house, and I was interviewing with two other applicants. One applicant was late. We waited on her for a bit, but ended up starting the interview without her. She ended up rushing in, apologizing for being late, and then she tripped on the stairs while going down to the table while we were sitting, or where we were sitting. In order to keep from falling, she grabbed a nearby birdcage, which was housing some finches, and pulled it down with her. Not a good entrance. Anyway, she joins the interview table, and about 10 minutes um, in, you can clearly see that she is the strongest candidate for the job. She has the experience, she's confident, professional, she's friendly and easy to talk to, but you knew she wasn't going to get an offer because of that wacky entrance. Oh, jeez. <laughs> After the interview ended, I left, I got a call, they were offering me the job. I would have gone to the other girl if she hadn't been, it would have gone to the other girl if she hadn't been late, tripped down the stairs, and then knocked over the finch cage. God damn, be on time, people. And on time when it comes to a motherfucking job interview is early, my nigga. How, how is that difficult to understand? This is the one time that you need to make an impression on some assholes. You know what I mean? You can you can try to make an impression on your on your on your significant other's family or some bullshit like that when you're meeting them for the first time because all they are all they are are, are creatures of you know uh, impression like all that matters to them is how you look in a very superficial and quick way because until they get to know you you could be anybody you could be anybody but with a fucking job my dude they are going to take a glance at you ask you a couple of fucking questions and figure out whether or not they think you would do a a less shitty job than all the other motherfuckers that they march in there the same thing goes with a job um audition you know yeah i gotta figure some shit out <laughs> you know this is hilarious this is getting pretty good Number 14, a guy came in high, tripped over a table, and tried to shake my hand but missed? Hmm? Well, damn, Audubon. Hey, Sayil. I appreciate this $10 ding-dong donation, Armando. Praise be to the Colazo. <laughs> Thank you, my man. And hello to yourself. So number 14, once again, a guy came in high, tripped over a table 
and tried to shake my hand but missed. One of his first questions was if we tested for drugs. What a cartoon. Somebody said, sounds like he was tripping. I will see myself out. You proud of that one? Man, a pun made me laugh the other night until I was crying, dude. That shit was so crazy. That shit was so crazy. I was laughing until I was crying. Ooh, I don't even know if I should share it with you here or if I should upload it as a separate video because I saved my reaction because, you know, the, uh, what do they call it? You know, like my little capture card was, you know, recording. Oh, man, it was insane. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of my emojis into the string chat. I choose the bleach because I love it. There it is. Enjoy that. Number 13. They showed up two hours early, acting like it was completely normal, and then wouldn't answer questions thoroughly. Man, 15 minutes early, max, dudes. Because if you're earlier than that, sit your happy ass down in the fucking car, all right? Go get a snack and just, you know, eat not too much, but enough to, you know. Oh, God. Hannah. Ooh. Upload it here, please. Armando Colazzo with another $10 bing bong donation. My man, he is taking a bite out of crime and taking a bite out of the current stream boss, Vanessa's health. Queen Vanessa may bow to Armando soon. Uh-oh. 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 Now, you do say to upload it here. I'm guessing you want me to find the video and then play it for you here. I'll figure it out after the uh, after I read these last 13. Number 13, they showed up two hours early, acting like it was completely normal, then wouldn't answer questions thoroughly. Can you tell me about what you did before? Was it similar? Oh, yeah, yep, it was. Can you elaborate on that? What was your experience like? Oh, it was good. I liked it. Ooh. Ugh. Like, yeah, mm. you know, I think, you know, I think I think what ends up making the stories like, yes, some people lack social grace enough to be self-aware to know that they're making a terrible fucking impression. And there's it's Nick. Do you remember the 21st night of September? You really you really donated to cash in on that meme tonight, the 21st night of September. OK. Suddenly, suddenly all y'all crackers know who the hell, um, or when and fire is, you know what I mean? He even spelled it the 21st night of September. Oh my God. Hold on. Tanya says, I don't even remember having an interview. I started working part time before I was hired for full 11 years and still working. That low-cut top was the best investment of that summer. I probably would have been a little awkward during an interview. <laughs> I'm Tanya. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was getting in the character. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so, you know. Mm, I hope you're all having a great night. Just trying to entertain somebody, you know somebody out there uh we appreciate prelude and his hardcore uh his hardcore donation mm. you guys are really chiseling down queen vanessa's stream boss health number 12 one time when i was accepting resumes a girl came in and i go to shake her hand and i ask her name and she doesn't shake my hand and points to her name on the resume, rolls her eyes and says, It literally says my name right there, okay? Don't be asking me stupid questions, bitch. I'm so tired of y'all. Y'all know exactly what my name is. What's your name? You see the resume right there. Don't touch my hand. You probably need some antibacterial, okay? Give me that germs, all your germs out of here, all your germs. Have I told you about my horoscopes? Just to make her uh, <laughs> a little more unbearable. Sorry, I was getting into character. Can you remember? Can you, can you, damn it. I said, I, I meant to say, can you believe? And then I said, remember the 21st night of September. Y'all are killing me. Y'all are killing me. Number 11. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. A kid kept <laughs> a kid kept talking about how he likes video games but couldn't apply it to anything IT support related. Like somehow the shitty ass support technician job was going to be his way into working at Blizzard one day making video games. We went with the girl who had zero experience, was honest, and sent us a thank you letter. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, it's Rhea. I wonder if she's topless in the bath. That was the way that she first found my channel when I was playing some shitty um, Grand Theft Auto. It was like Grand Theft Auto Vice City or some shit like that. That was pretty amazing. That was pretty amazing. Will Smith is my dad says, Kyle, damn, I got here late as fuck. I didn't get a notification. I'm sorry. You know what I would recommend for any and everybody listening to this, whether you're listening to it after the stream has actually um, ended on YouTube, um, get into the discord because when I start the streams, we send out a mass notification that'll go straight to your phone. Um, letting you know that the stream has begun. Armando Calazo says that he has to go. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow, my man. You deserve no less. You deserve no less. Bing my bongs. So as we travel up this list, we arrive at the final 10 on the reminder of this list being the 20 foolproof ways to ruin a job interview. You know you like that thumbnail. That's a dope ass picture. Yeah, yeah, I don't have nothing to say about that. You know, I'd I slave for a good four minutes before the stream begins and then I end up late by two minutes because I don't get everything that I need to get done in time. A bing bong. You're welcome, okay? <laughs> You're welcome. Number 10. Most memorable interview I've conducted was for an inbound call center customer service position. We greet the girl, she's in her early 20s, she's white and dressed like a valley girl. She has a freaking entourage with her, like maybe four people show up to sit in our lobby while this girl interviews. It's not really a red flag, but come on now, all right? The weird thing I notice is that she hobbled, she's hobbled like newborn giraffes. She says she twisted her ankle earlier that week, and I think to myself, okay, maybe four inch heels weren't the best choice. Any, again, nothing to rule her out, it was just weird. <coughs> then the interview. Her only work history was for a veterinarian clinic as a receptionist. We ask her typical questions like, tell us about a time that you have a great, you gave great customer service. What would you do if you didn't know that the answer to a customer's question, pretty normal shit. Anytime she gave an example, it was about how she worked with animals and how the animals appreciated her. She wasn't applying for customer service, custom all. God damn it. This nigga spelled my name wrong and bust a unfunny here some money. I'm not going I'm not going to kill you, my dude. But I'm going to give you something to think about. <laughs> Pray Lucy said Milky you tried and failed in in like three different ways, man. Where help me count the ways. Anytime she gave an example, it was about how she's worked with animals and the animals appreciated her. She was applying for a customer service position and it was one where you talk to people and her answers were all about how she'd make sure the dogs were happy. Nothing about uh, actually dealing with people. It was like pulling teeth trying to get a reasonable answer out of this bitch and we conclude the interview and are leaning towards a uh, no. As we are signing her out, she turns to the other interviewer who is African American and female and says out of the blue, Just so you know, I'm like so against racism. High five! The coworker was like, uh, okay, how do you mean? And then the interviewer says, I'm just like so against it. If a customer is racist to me, I will hang up. I do not tolerate racism. And the coworker says, I don't really understand how that would apply here. And the interviewee says, My grandma is like a fourth Puerto Rican. And if someone tries to be racist towards me because of it, I will hang up. Coworker says, I don't think you'll have to worry about that. And needless to say, she didn't get hired. Oh my God. 
<laughs> Linda's loving gay baby jail. You know, I need to get. <laughs> I need to get like a specific emoji for for timing people out, man. It's not going. It's not hurting anybody. Just send your sit your gay baby ass in jail for a little bit. You know what I mean? William Will Smith is my dad. Says, "What's your PSN?" Spoken like a true. Uh, this is my first day on Kyle's uh, channel, motherfucker. Um, I'm gonna let you guess. All right, it's five letters in a very specific order. The E does not become before the A, just like uh, Milky made a mistake here, you know, and tried right here. So, Bing Bong. Wait, he spelled it right. It was just a space in the middle of the name, which is kind of bizarre. Man, <laughs> what a weird guy. And why are you wondering what my PSN is? Because the only people who should want my PSN are people who have played Warframe and have a little bit of platinum for Kyel. Now that's what I'm talking about. Number nine, this guy wouldn't stop talking. I actually couldn't even, str he actually, no, I actually couldn't even string three words together without him interrupting. Instant fail. How you interrupting people in the damn interview? Just like trying to assert dominance and confidence gone wrong. You interrupting the interviewer? Somebody responds a couple of times after a horrible interview like yours. I've given people interview tips after telling them that it wasn't going to work out. Probably not the smartest thing on my part, but they seem generally appreciative of my advice. Well, if they fucking failed, they really need to understand how or why. And like not do that again because you suck. What's wrong with you? That would be me in an interview. Oh my god. Sin Duncan says, Kyle, can I join your Destiny 2 clan? Duncan, listen to me, okay? You can do anything you want with that long, abandoned clan. The bottom line is, the bottom line is, it's been a while. It's been a long while since I've touched Destiny. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to say that I believe that the underhanded, uh, kind of not forthcoming, the, basically the way that the developers lie and then kind of just expect the, the people playing the game, the player base to just roll over, I think it's unacceptable. So I haven't been in Destiny in a while. Everybody's coming at me now saying, oh man, Forsaken really has made the game, you know, better. Maybe it should have been that way when it came out, homie. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe three DLCs isn't what a game should take to get good, okay? And maybe for people who were there from the beginning who paid $60, then $20, then $20, then $40 more dollars to have a good game? No, bro. And I'll tell you this, I'm playing Warframe and having the time of my life life kylara hermanson says kyle thank you for keeping me entertained at work no problem my man you deserve no less i'm glad that you can find some sort of uh distraction in these uh weird little lists that i'm finding because i'll tell you what man these aren't the most interesting topics but i'm just hoping that we can do something interesting with them i may have to invite somebody like stripes back on pending hannah's freak out i'm kidding she doesn't care but uh but I don't know. I think it it would drive me insane. And that's what Hannah cares about is me going fucking crazy. <laughs> Jesus Lord. And that's the truth of it. Number 8. We asked him what his weakness was and he said Asian chicks. Oh my god. Did he think that you meant like whoa. Whoa. What a contextual misunderstanding. We asked him what his weakness was, and he said Asian chicks. The HR girl was of Asian background, and he winked at her when he said it. Not in a job interview, dude. Not HR. Ooh, I'm literally like rubbing my face. That's two fucking strikes right there. That's two fucking strikes right there. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's that's fantastic. Ooh. Oof. Where's that? Do I have that on the soundboard? I should have an oof on a soundboard. Why not? No. <gasps> there it is. Man, I want like a bass boosted oof. Gotta be a little bit hardcore. Ow, 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 ow. Stop rubbing your eye like that. I hope nobody heard me rubbing my eye. Listen. 
My reaction was, dude, what the fuck? He got upset at me, swearing in the interview. He didn't get the job, and then he wrote a long email to HR, the same girl read it, that he was discriminated against due to his sexual preferences and felt intimidated with my use of foul language. Oh yeah? That sounds pretty cool, you know? That sounds pretty interesting. Pretty cool. Wow. Asian girls. Mm. It's not like she was like a fat, fat booty Asian girl. That would be some next level shit. I'd be like, wait a goddamn minute. You know what I mean? I would need like a car tire screech sound effect for some fat booty Asian girl going, going and she says something like, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was only trying to help or some shit like that. And I'd be like, <gasps> and she'd be like, are you okay? And I'd be like, I'm just choking on the idea of living my life without you in it. It, it would be like an existence without air. Which seems kind of fitting because I feel adrift as if in space as I look into your eyeballs. And she'd be like, you're sounding kind of creepy. What a neck beard. I have just the subreddit for you. And she starts typing a story. You, he said some bullshit about space. Okay, number eight. <laughs> Asian chicks, number seven. That's going to sound weird out of context. Number seven, interviewing for a paramedic position. I asked him if he had ever done anything against the company's policy because he thought it was the right thing to do. I asked every question, or I asked everyone this question. This dude flat out tells me that he beat up a pay. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I get ahead of myself while I'm reading, man. Oh, uh, okay. This dude. <laughs> Start over. I'm sorry. Number seven. Interviewing for a paramedic position, I asked him if he had ever done anything against the company's policy because he thought that was the right. <laughs> Can we get some bleach shots? Can we get shots? some bleach shots? Prelude, thank you for this donation of $4.20. Smoke weed every day. And if what you want is some bleach, then there it is, my dude. You know, on this, the 21st night of September. Number seven. Interviewing for a paramedic position, I asked him if he had ever done anything against the company's policy because he thought it was the right thing to do. I asked everyone this question. This dude flat out tells me that he beat up a patient that had overdosed to teach him a lesson. Oh, yeah. That's a lesson you never gonna forget, baby. Ooh, Linda says, oh no, Vanessa in danger. Somebody's gonna swoop in with a hotshot bing bong donation, man, and they're gonna be the new stream boss. Can you believe that? Can you, can you fucking handle that? A new stream boss, my God. A new stream boss. This dude didn't get the job, and I talked to all of the people that handle hiring at the agencies near us. Oh my god. How does that not stain your record in a way that it immediately comes up? You know? <sighs> well, you're gonna have to try harder than that, Will Smith is my dad. But I appreciate you, my man. Why did it notify? Oh, wait. It, uh, it only made the noise. It didn't read anything. I wonder if he made a comment, but, you know, we'll never get to hear it because, you know, unless it was, uh, unless it was three bucks, then it won't read it. Hmm. I doubt it. I doubt it. So as we continue up to number six, pretty simple job description. I need you to show up on time and do your motherfucking job. You'll be driving approximately 200 miles per day. Interview question one. This job requires a decent driving record. Before we run your record, is there anything that I should know? Any driving while intoxicated? Any driving under the influence? Or speeding in the last two years? His answer was no, absolutely not. I ran the record. Okay, your record is clean. You also don't have a driver's license. Answer. Will that really be an issue? I drive fine. This motherfucker Yay. really stole, really stole stream boss. He hit y'all with that $3 on that bing bong. And now Prelude is the new stream boss. Well, 
credit where credit is due. Thank you. Thank you, Prelude. Thank you for liking the video. Everybody else was here. I said it. You did it. We making it. So the guy says, will that really be an issue? I mean, licenses. Pfft. Yeah, that's really going to be an issue, bitch. Second interview of the day, a guy comes in and tells me that he refuses to answer directly to a female about driving a truck. Uh oh. And that he will not be able to work at eight, but he could be in by nine and he will not work the day before any holiday. Basically, liars and demanders are instantly out. Uh, choosy beggars out here. Little to no experience. Be excited about learning. I'm more likely to hire a guy who comes in and says that I don't know how to do this. But if you show me, I will learn than a guy who lays down the law walking into the interview. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Will Smith says, I didn't make a comment, Kyle. I didn't know what to say. That's okay. I appreciate you. As we roll up to number five. Ooh, we're almost through this list. I was interviewing someone and the kid told me that he can't work weekends because he will be too drunk from partying and needs Mondays off to recover. What the fuck? <laughs> Number four. I had a guy try to convince me that the nine year gap in his employment history was because he spent time working for a shadowy government organization. I wasn't convinced at all. Guess who had several news articles written about his arrest and trial that led to him ending up on the sex offenders list? That guy. Shadowy government organization. Well. Well. Why is Linda making that face? What happened? Y'all ridiculous. Y'all are ridiculous. Hey, look, to everybody who's lurking in the stream chat who probably doesn't normally speak, just put a lowercase h. I want to see that in the stream chat. I just want to know that you're there, you know, and that you're liking the video and that, you know, I love you. Mm, yeah. Number four. I read it. Number three. Okay, Kylara, game of skill here. We got Jesus, Jordan Ross. I've seen that name before. Okay. Got no name, no name. Man, what an enigma. What an enigma. Spooky blacks. Not a regular, not your regular black, okay? But the spooky can. Silver Fox, that sounds like a like a big titty lady that's mature, like she's had her kids, but all those kids are gone, like they've flown out of their roost. Uh, maybe maybe one, you know, is in jail, you know, because he made some passes at a girl at a job and then she denied him and it got a little intense. So he started stalking her, got a restraining order, but, uh, you know, it wasn't enough. He had to he had to break in and he like jizzed all over her face or some shit like that. But, you know, because of the jizz, and because she was a strong willed woman that didn't wash it off, she went straight. She went straight to the police department and they. And they got that jizz and the DNA was in the jizz, you know, and they, they got his ass and he's in jail now. That's assault, baby. Can't just be jizzing on motherfuckers. What the fuck? I'm sorry, Silver Fox. It's not it's not uh, it's not about you not being a great mom. You know, some people, when they reach a certain age, they just make their own choices. They live their own life. It's not their fault. Um, it's not your fault. You know what they do just because they're all related. You know, you tried your best. So we got KV on Windham. <laughs> Hilltown to Joe. Okay, but not Bulgarian. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Nice to know you're still there. Nice to know he's still there. Pretty dope. Got Daniel, True Shots, Lucas, and uh, and No Name says couldn't think of a name. Giggle. You better be a girl saying shit like that. <laughs> All right. Oh God. Well, well, well. The daughter of the Kyle stream is actually here. In her desperate effort to avoid my streams, I have you. I have you. Well, 
Whoa, Sadeja's here too. Isn't that something? And Jan Sport. <laughs> or Jan's Port. Like the backpack. Like the backpack. We'll be all right. I'm so sorry. You know. <laughs> um, let's continue this list. That's a weird username. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> let's continue Jesus says we need Sarah Bishop to so show back up man yeah I don't know that Sarah Bishop has you know stayed away from the things she used to abused you know we don't know that she's okay Number three, the true story. I was interviewing a kid for a sales position a few years ago. I looked and it seemed totally normal. We greet each other and sit down. I think we want another song. Should I go with that one? Whatever. We greet each other and sit down. And I take a second to look down at the copy of his resume that he brought. And then I look back up. Suddenly... He's wearing glasses. And not like regular glasses, like Coke bottle glasses that I didn't know existed outside of bad 80s comedies. I look back down at his resume to reset and compose myself. And when I look back up, the glasses are fucking gone. I almost died. He pulled this black magic fuckery three more times in the interview, never actually saw him in the act of taking the glasses on or off, and in retrospect, I should have hired him. It was the biggest mistake of my life. He's probably He, he was probably trying to look cool without him, but really needed them to see or some bullshit. Oh no, that's funny. Uh-huh. So as we roll up to number two, I asked her what her approach to working in teams was and she said, that's very difficult for me because I usually feel like everyone is against me and ganging up on me and I need to work alone. That doesn't fly for junior creatives at ad agencies, bitch. Someone says that's code for doesn't take criticism well. Okay. The number one on this entry is a guy rescheduled with me twice because of issues at his current job. Fine, I get it. It's a little bit loud now. Give me a break. Fine, I get it. Putting your work ahead of the interview, it's cool with me. I agree to a time that we could meet or staying late in order to conduct the interview. Then he doesn't show up for like 20 minutes after the agreed time and as I was walking out the door and turning off the lights... The position has been vacant for too long, and his resume is solid, so I just go ahead with the interview. He doesn't make it more than two minutes before he is staring at his phone. I asked him to leave, and went home. Someone says, I'm just shocked that someone could be so situationally oblivious that they'd pull out their phone in the middle of an interview. I like to think that we see that kind of oblivion in the goddamn stream chat sometimes. All you have to do is not look like some kind of fucking moron, you know? But I bet you the people who ended up banned like all those weeks and months ago, they are shocked. They're confused. What do you mean? I just typed in all cats that I like to lick buttholes and wanted to dip my tongue in your butt. I wanted to dip my tongue in your butt. Damn, Banal. JG Wentworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. I have a structured settlement, but I need cash now. Call JG Wentworth, 877 cash now. I wonder if those commercials are everywhere or if it's like a local thing, you know? My man, Banal, I appreciate you. That's a hot shot bing bong donation. And I think it shows the kind of gentleman that Banal is, you know, because he could have done that earlier. He could have snagged that stream boss, but he let he let Prelude have it. You know what I mean? He let him have it. He let him just come and take that. But Banal, he was sitting there like, oh, 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 oh. Oh, man. Strange. You know, that donation has me in a good mood. It makes me wonder if I should read um, one of these other lists that I pulled up that didn't quite make the cut tonight. One of the other lists was, what's the most important question to get to know someone better? 
what I was going to do was read this list. Whoa. Now fuck with that. Whoa, he said, nah, fuck with that. Wow, Prelude. Trying to repair your own HP. You know, you're giving yourself a potion in this Pokemon battle. It's okay, man. They'll chisel you down over time before you can make it to a Pokemon Center. My dude. Thank you once again, Banal. Thank you once again, Prelude. But what I will say is that one of the other lists that I picked up or, you know, glanced at to read was what was one, uh, what's a, a, an important question to ask, to learn, um, you know, things about somebody to get to know them better. What I was going to do was read this list and then answer the questions myself. But at the same time, I'm like, man, what the fuck ever. <laughs> um, this other one is what's a tip that could save someone's ass in a really specific situation. So it's kind of like a it's kind of like a what's a useless, you know, tip kind of question. I do love that kitty cat. It's cute. That's a cute kitty. Cute kitty. <laughs> Maybe Bongo Cat can give you yarn. Who want yarn? Linda want yarn. I don't have enough yarn for my basket weave stitch scarf. Oh. Y'all girls out here stitching. I like to think that at this point, if I ever established the Kyle compound and invited a bunch of people to come live with me on the Kyle compound, all the women, instead of being like a, a, a groupy entourage for me, they would just want to like find a room with some rocking chairs and crochet and like knit and shit and watch really shitty uh, movies that I'd hate. So like, you know, they'd have it on, they'd have it on all the time. So whenever I walked in and they'd be, I'd be all like, Hey, what's going on? They'd be like, mm, and they point at the screen and I'd be like, Oh, I hate this movie. <laughs> Sorry, man. My imagination's like, <laughs> it's running amok. It's running a goddamn muck. We can poison with a horny Kool-Aid at the Kyo compound. There's a lot to unwrap in that thing that he just said. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. We can poison the with a horny Kool-Aid. <laughs> what? Uh, well, I don't understand. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look, man. I'm going to go with this. Uh, I don't know if I want people knowing anything about me, man. Obviously, that's the one that people are dying for me to do is to answer these questions. Here's what I'll do. I'll answer these questions in a very Kyle way, which is like super rude and, you know, the opposite of informative. So we'll read this question. We'll read this entry um, or the 20 entries on this list. That's basically what are some good questions to get to know some people? Okay. Number 20 reads, would you rather have invisibility or flight? Now, <laughs> I'm going to say it to you like this, my dude. Invisibility is going to be extremely beneficial because at the very least you can stay not seen. In the world we live in, my dude, I know it sounds like I'm just going to use that opportunity to steal shit. And that's not true. That's not true. You know what I mean? Um... Hmm? The link won't let me throw my money at you. Oh, thank you, Silver Fox, for that super chat. I appreciate you trying the link first, but I also appreciate you uh, taking the opportunity that worked. I, I'm charmed by you. You make my mouth truly. Walter. Well, back to my question. Would you rather have invisibility or flight? And like I said, I know it sounds like I just used this opportunity to steal, but it's not true. I wouldn't use it to sneak it. You know what I mean? I think I I think when I think about powers, because I'm black as well, maybe I'm thinking like X-Men. You know what I mean? So I want us to think about flight, my dude. I want us to think about flight. If 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 the government caught somebody flying through the sky, they would catch this motherfucker and dissect his ass. You know what I'm talking about? No, no joke. No question open and shut they would just 
fucking get your ass and that'd be that i think if you had super fucking powers my dude the smartest motherfucking thing you could do is lay goddamn low there is no becoming a superhero there is no marvel styled bullshit my dude you need to lay low and hope to live as close to a normal life without you being dissected as possible that's some real shit maybe you know maybe i've muddled this question with real uh, nerd crap but the bottom line is invisibility is the one that's going to have you leading a life that that you know it's it's i mean what are you going to get out of flight my dude you won't be able to fly to whoever you want and bang them you know is that is that your idea or better yet you know some girls just like ew why would i want to bang you and you'd be like bitch i could fly though and she'd be like man they all be saying that everybody could fly <sighs> and you'd be like well can you fly like this <laughs> that was bullshit I hope that was a satisfying answer to that question. Number 19. Okay. What are, what are you passionate about? I'm passionate about whiskey and distilling, but I'm also passionate about pushing others to find their passion. I'll tell you one thing. I'm passionate about uh, making the few people that I am interested in or close to cringe on a daily basis. I'm interested in making people that I care about laugh, uh, maybe through saying something that's utterly ridiculous, maybe through, uh, <clears throat> I can't even show this. This is a toad that was taking a crap and it was like gigantic. Is this a lizard as a topping on a goddamn pizza? <sighs> that really made me cringe and I'm sore because I was lifting and it hurt. Oh God. You know, I, I didn't need that. Yo, yo. <laughs> God, just no chill. Hey, let's watch a street fight. It's only 48 seconds. Yeah. Street fighter versus boxer. This is going to be lame. Oh, that's the, oh, my God. You don't have to kick a dude in the face. Come on, my God, my dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to kick you in the face, bitch. Screaming 88-year-old granny gets beat up by drunk man. Now, please don't let any of these people be of the wrong ethnicity to make this terrible. Oh, just let them be white. Let that be the end of it. Please, God. You know, it's over in Bing Pong land. This, this, the quality doesn't look good. Oh, my God. Please, God, don't, don't let them be. Okay, God. What are you doing? What are you doing, my dude? What are you fucking doing? What's wrong with you, bitch? Yeah, get off the... It's an old lady, bitch. What's wrong with you? Punk ass. Yo, what's wrong? You don't like people hitting your back? My, my dude, what's wrong, bitch? You don't like the foot in the face? You beating up an old lady? You beating up an old lady? It's not fine? You don't like the way it feels? What's going on? Oh, my God! Ooh! Number 18. I asked him. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. There's evil out there, man. Damn. Why? Oh, my God. Number 18. I asked about their dream vacation. What Ky What's Kyle's dream vacation? Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, should I be honest as a man? That's the real question. That's the real question. I like to think that my dream vacation would be a trip to a place that's like Thailand, except it's all free, right? And instead of the like Thai girls, right? What you have are physical representations of real life anime girls, right? And not just anime girls, but maybe girls like from video games and pop culture as well, where it's just like you snap your fingers and almost like 3D print a living, you know, why not? Why not just get a sex bot that can change her uh, physical uh, attributes, my dude? And you can have her just be like, boom, slave Leia, you know? 
uh boom give me one of the uh one of the companions to doctor who uh boom uh you know scarlett johansson who knows what's going on here elena bottom carter um <laughs> what's, what's, what's on the list what is on the list it's pretty uh look look it couldn't just be sex driven okay that's my that's my amusing kyle answer obviously but uh i like to think that my dream my dream scenario and this is going to show you how 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 much i'm not a child anymore unfortunately it's just to be somewhere where i have food available to me where i have access to the internet you know but but the certainty but the guarantee that i will not be disturbed by the outside world for nothing short of at least a week you know and that doesn't sound like amazing right but there it is <laughs> there it is this dude answers exploring someplace tropical in february nigga i'm flipping off right now y'all can't hear y'all can't hear that you know hold on let me tap the mic with the middle finger mm, motherfucker fuck your answer oh it goes to place tropical in february yeah dude Mine fucking, you know, uh, dream representations and nobody bothering me. That's the better one. That's the good one. Okay. Jeez. <sighs> Prelude says Kyle is going to Comic-Con then. That, that'd be like if I had a BBW fetish and wanted, uh, and wanted all of my pop culture, uh, all of my, well, I guess, I guess in a way I do like them thicker. So it'd be funny if like, eh, I like Slave Leia and everything, but she ain't thick enough. And then I go to Comic-Con and all my prayers are answered. What? Number 17. How do you spend your time? Oh, no. I love this question because what do you do is so work centric and many people don't work. OK, so here's a good answer to that question. OK. Y'all want to know how I spend my time? I spend my time creating things that never get finished okay perhaps nobody understands that more than the people who have spent even a small amount of time with me you know whether it's a song whether it's a script whether it's a concept or an idea i'm sitting on an idea for a fallout 76 video right now let me explain it to you okay um the video is basically me playing different characters um and uh, the whole point of the video is just me going, these are the different types of people you're going to meet in Fallout 76. There's a bunch of archetypes. You got like the Black Widow, who is a woman who is out to just pretty much squeeze any of these stupid, unsuspecting young boys for whatever the hell they're willing to give her. You know, in games, in video games, you're going to have trading systems and you're going to have girls who are just like, I'm new. I wish I had something. And guys will just give them whatever they fucking have. You know what I mean? We got like the the little shit who's like 12 years old, who's just throwing this on because, you know, his friends are done playing Fortnite for the evening. So he might as well just level up in this bullshit. Um, he's yelling at you like it's like it's 2008 in a in a match of Grand Theft Auto 4 telling you, you know, all of the all of the 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 N word F the fag, fag you gay bitch dyke cunt just all of the words like he's got a like he's got like a billboard in front of him. With every swear word just rattling them off. And because that's what makes him hard. That's what makes him cool online. He's a bad motherfucker. And he's going to let you know that this is his lobby. And he's 12 years old. And I sound just like this. You got me fucked up coming in here. You better put all your shit on the ground that you got. Or I'm going to kill you, man. I'm going to keep killing you over and over. I'm going to find you, man. Sending you sending you messages. That's just bottom line fucking crazy. Like, I'm going to find your house, man. <laughs> no, that's bullshit. God damn. Love it. You got a misogynist, you know, that's kind of like close to the Kyle uh, and in game, but minus the charisma. That's like, listen, bitch, you need somebody that's going to protect you. We, we, you could also call that class the cop, you know, uh, I don't want to see you running around <laughs> with without protection. I got I found a collar. I found a leash and you're going to wear it because I'm I'm, I'm gonna protect you. You belong to me. You're my property. And all this bullshit. There's like so many things I have written down here. And that's just a small taste. The bottom line is I I know what it's like to not have something to occupy you occasionally. 
um, when you may just be looking for even the slightest distraction, if not just something to put on in the background while you're doing something else. And I strive to provide something entertaining to fill that, you know, hole for some people. But I have such I have such a poor follow through that so much of what I start doesn't reach completion. So I hope somebody else that may, you know, have the same thing going on in their life where they don't finish things. My nose is so stuffed up all the time, like every time I start talking. Um, I hope that you don't feel discouraged because you can uh, because you can't finish it. Sorry, that sounded long winded. It was really just one example of the plenty of the things on my hard drive that are unfinished. As a matter of fact, let me pull up something in audacity and see where that is. You know, um, I finished that Amy Winehouse song. Um, not that anybody cares. What the fuck? Uh, let me see here. Oh, but if I play it, I'll get copyright struck, dude. I'll play just an excerpt. I'll play just an excerpt. You're still going to get struck, my dude. You know what you're playing with, and it's fire. Is it worth striking the whole video, Bing Bong Bros? Uh, okay, here it is. Whatever. Mute that. Here's this. Waiting for the end to come. Wishing I had strength to stand. This is not what I had planned. It's out of my control. Flying at the speed of light. Thoughts were spinning in my head So many things were left unsaid It's hard to let you go I know what it takes to move on I know how it feels to lie all I want to do is trade this life for something new Holding on to what I haven't got I'm sitting in an empty room Alright, look, the problem is I've got about seven projects in fucking Audacity that are unfinished And that's bad, dude Finish your shit, dude. Remember I started that one, um, oh my God, I think it was called Big Iron. Let me see if that's somewhere on here. Dude. To the town of all of Rio rode a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. No one dared to ask his business. No one dared to make a slip for the string. Jesus, that needs to be studio. Um, don't worry about it. But the bottom line is, Jesus Christ. There's too much. There's too much. I'm dying. I'm dying. And I wish I knew what to... I wish I knew what to attack first, you know? Mm -mm. But actually, three of them are finished. So I think I should just make like five more and then throw them all on a really, uh, really hilarious album. Like one big video, seven different tracks, and let that be the end of it. Bing my ball. Dude, my phone keeps blowing up because I'm part of this group, right? That had to do with this guy that was, uh, um, he was part, he was connected to some furries, right? Who were having sex with dead animals and living animals too. It was disgusting, you know what I mean? Uh, Medicare just made a video on that shit, but this dude was, uh, 
Oh God, like some videos and some pictures were released of him just violating some animals, some real life animals, and it was disgusting. You know what I mean? So a hell of a lot of people got some shit to answer for because there's a lot of correspondence. There's back and forth. There's there's pictures linking the animals in the uh, the animals linking the animals in the nasty shit to pictures on their Twitters and shit like that. And it's like, God damn, man, what's wrong with y'all? You that degenerate where you're, you're, you're wanting to put yourself inside a dead creature? Like, what is wrong with you? And the group that I'm in has like a dude that just keeps leaking more shit, you know? And as he's been at it for like days, every day, more shit, more shit. Where's it all coming from? How much of this crap is, is there out there? And it's so gross, dude. And I can't keep it on the computer so I couldn't make a video. It's the type of shit where I download it thinking, yeah, nigga, I'm gonna make a video and just put this dude on blast because it's important that he be exposed. You know what I mean? But as I'm downloading the, the, the shit and looking at this shit, in my brain, I'm thinking, God damn. If I had a heart attack right now and they found me in here with this shit on my computer, oh no, oh no. And on top of that, my dude, and on top of that, the, the you get through two or three pictures, you know, this guy's this guy is is, is is communicating and sharing pictures and videos with people who are drugging animals, who are finding carcasses and penetrating them and then putting their, their, come on, dude, talk about plopping their fingers in the in the living butts. And like I said, like I said, the the most damning shit. The paint on their hands, the red, the, the red on their hands is the images that link the same animals to these people's Twitter's account. You know what I mean? When they taking pictures and shit and they were even showing like the teeth next to one another. It's just like, oh, my God, please stop. Please stop. It's, it's truly vomit worthy. Bing bong. OK, so that's the end of it. I, I you know. There are some things where you look at it and you think, man, that's injustice. But this was one of these things where it was like, it doesn't need to be me. Somebody will do somebody will cover that shit. It doesn't need to be me. As we roll up this list, though, number 16 says use F.O.R.D. Family Occupation Recreation Recreation Dreams, because people like talking about that. Never R.A.P.E., which is religion, abortion, politics and economy. Well, oh, oh, sorry economy what he was saying is you should talk about family occupation recreation recreation stupid english and dreams what are my dreams family occupation recreation i hate all of these because to the to the wrong person the answer to all of these would be sex anyway I said it. Some people live in the South, baby. <laughs> That's pretty good. Ooh, Rhea hit somebody's comment. Let's see what that says. Call Peta. What's that? Oh, call Peta? Hmm. Is that what he meant? Why did she? Rhea's an interesting girl. There's a story there, and I hope we get it. Number 15, you have the gay. Well, you know, some people used to think that when I was younger because I would just run from some of the girls, you know, I knew a lot of these women were interested in me for the wrong reasons when I was younger. So I would run and I would sing my songs. I'd say, ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. I'm going to find you. And number 14, what was your mother's maiden name? What street did you grow up on? What's the name of your first pet? Guess who's never had a pet? Play that small violin for me, guys. Guess who's never had a pet in their entire life? I co-owned a pet with somebody. <coughs> <coughs> that doesn't really count, you know? What's my mother's maiden name? Don't worry about it. Isn't it mine? Isn't it mine? What street did you grow up on? Hmm. Even I'm not sure. Even I'm not sure. Didn't spend a lot of time there. Sometimes you just don't. Rhea says, those are security questions. I think that's a joke. 
Someone says, if you find a suitcase with an amount of money as your social security number, how much money would you have? <laughs> oh, God. That's good. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kodo says, my first pet was a fish named Sushi. Oh, poor, poor, poor cat. Fish. What? Number 13. What character do you use in Mario Kart? I'm not going to lie. I used Wario and Bowser a lot. Wario and Bowser. Does that say anything about me? I'm talking about Mario Kart N64. The OG Mario Kart, my dudes. You know? Y'all don't know shit about that. N64 Mario Kart. When did that release? December... 1996 I'm dying inside Jesus so long has it been I feel like I could almost remember the smell of those fucking boxes dude I think I want like a new N64 game as crazy as that sounds just to have that on a fucking shelf or some shit. Maybe the box would be fine too. Just to put it on the shelf like a true nerd, like a dweeb setting up a set for a video I'm not going to make because I'm not that kind of dude. Let's continue up this list. I'm bumming myself out with the answers to these now. Number 12. Do you pee in the shower? Doesn't everybody at least once or twice? It's going down the drain, right? Who can say that they haven't done that? What? Someone says there's two types of people. People who pee in the shower and liars. <laughs> Somebody says there's a third group that lies down, pees, and pretends that they're the Bellagio Fountain. Ew. 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 Number 11. What's the most important question to ask someone? Okay, good one. Mm hmm. Funny. Rhea says, okay, apparently I'm being rude on my phone, so I gotta go see you guys. Oh, meaning she's probably at like a gathering or something and everybody's like, why are you on your phone? You're being rude. And she's like, OK, so apparently I'm being rude on my phone. Rhea is quite the character. She's pretty amusing. <laughs> Guys, get this. They said that because I'm not paying attention to them that I have some sort of problem. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Assholes. OK, number 10. My hometown was small, but I enjoyed growing up there. How about you? Asking where they grew up and their experiences usually opens the door to a wider, more interesting conversation. Usually, indeed. Ugh. So this this la this next list is putting me to sleep. They are fucked up. Number nine. If you could take five non-replaceable personal artifacts on an intergalactic voyage, what would you take? Non-replaceable? What does that mean? Somebody said, I only need my towel. Never, ever forget your towel. A towel, the guide says, is about the most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can have. This is a reference to the hitchhiker's guide to the... Wow. Part, partly, it has great practical value. You can wrap it around you for warmth as you bound across the cold moons of Jaglan Beta. You can lie on it on the brilliant marble sanded beaches of Santraginus V, inhaling the heady sea vapors. You can sleep under it beneath the stars which shine so redly on the desert world of Kakrafun. Use it to sail a mini raft down the slow, heavier river moth. I think, I think I, come on, you're killing me. More importantly, a towel has immense psychological value. For some reason, if a strag discovers that a hitchhiker has his towel with him, he will automatically assume that he is also in possession of a toothbrush, 
a face flannel, soap, tin of biscuits, flask, compass, map, ball of string, gnat spray, wet, weather gear, spacesuit, etc., etc. Furthermore, the... What? Who wrote... Who... Who inserted a portion of the Hitchhiker's Guide into a Reddit post? I feel like when things happen like this, all I can do is blame Jesus. It's because of Jesus that this many people survived Pandora's box being reopened. My dude. We were this close to purging humanity. You know? We just have to start over. Too many of them are too far gone. They're lost. We need a Thanos-like event to reach the people who otherwise wouldn't be reachable. You know? When you think about nukes dropping right now, there are people in vaults right now, dude. And they are the wealthy. You hear that? I'm doing the finger thing. Because they got the money. Okay? We ain't gonna hit these people with nukes. We need a gauntlet. And some infinity stones. Number eight. If you were to die tomorrow, what would you regret not having told someone? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I live my life like that. I don't think I keep myself from admitting things to people that I feel they need to know. I don't think I have anything like that, which surely is a good thing. Number seven, ask them about their relationships with others in their lives. If they say that everyone in their life is toxic and full of so much drama, then there is a good chance that they may come with some drama. Well, I guess you'd need people in your life to have them be toxic. Huh. I could say that the fear of people being toxic might keep me from venturing. I don't like why well, I don't leave the house. I don't know. I don't know where I'm supposed to find people. You know what I'm talking about? This is just a bizarre question at this point. You know, with the taste of your lips, I'm on a ride. You know, everybody's toxic. I'm slipping under number six. Can I see your browsing history? I'll ask for it. Here it comes. All right. Let me see. I'm, on my, I'm a man of my word. Uh, history. Okay. So this is from like earlier, right? Let's go. Let's go down here. Pissed Mr. Burns. Of course, I was looking for our thumbnail for the earlier list. There it is. You know, 20 foolproof ways to ruin a job interview. Wow. Okay. So let's go down. We got a whole bunch of Reddit threads while I'm obviously trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, my man looking through pop tarts and for that magic shell that smuckers magic shell that's what I like to top my ice cream with for people who don't know don't know what that is that's uh you put like you 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 put that on top of the ice cream and it hardens into a chocolate shell okay so some more redditing you know some Xbox live trash talk I really was just in the mood um, I think I was actually I think I was actually in the mood to see if I could get somewhere in that fallout video so look at, at least a very a very clear attempt at me uh, and trying to get something done. How unfortunately. Uh, Stormy Daniels. Okay. 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 I was on a call with Hannah. Um, and recently we were discussing how. No. How recently uh, Stormy Daniels said that uh, President Trump. Uh, President Trump had a penis shaped like. Uh, toadstool from uh, um, from Mario Stormy Daniels toad if you type that in um, here it is you know Stormy Daniels says that Trump's penis uh, looks like toad from Mario Kart this is not a, a made up story this is real life and earlier uh, when I was discussing that with Hannah I said I find it so bizarre you know, Trump wasn't president at the time, but he was a wealthy man. And I said, I found it so bizarre that Stormy Daniels was his choice when he could have slept with any of these hot sluts. Because if you look at Stormy's titties, 
they look like uh they look like a woman's titties who got a breast implant 15 years ago they look like the titties of a woman with implants 15 years past their prime <coughs> so my question was you know with, with a lot of rich people with a lot of people in hollywood they're all degenerates you know and especially some of the men if they could have their choice of anybody they'd go straight to a fucking college or even a high school this is what i said to hannah i said why the fuck you choosing stormy daniels i i ended up as i ended up analyzing and probably coming to the conclusion that maybe it represented like a childhood fantasy of his maybe stormy daniels was a bitch that he saw in playboy magazines or something like that and it's just been a lifelong dream to be with him maybe maybe that was his halle berry or beyonce or somebody that he just pinned up on a poster and man if i ever make it i want to be with this bitch you know what i'm talking about but to me stormy daniels got the body of like a not even like a 40 year old broad not even like a 50 year old broad but maybe 60 where back in the day she did some things to make the titties bigger at the time but now it's just it's just all wrong you know god bless her she's not a unattractive woman or whatever i don't have to cover my ass on this i'm just saying you know why her that was my point so yeah i was showing hannah a little bit of what was going on um as it pertains to you know oh my god fly amazing titties and then uh, uh, her titties what's going on anyway um, I was looking up dank memes. I wonder what was going on. Let's look at this Imgur link and see what it is. If sci-fi movies were uh, realistic. Oh no, this place is going to explode. We're doomed. Don't worry, babe. My nerdy sidekick will hack the system and turn it off in under 30 seconds. And then when we scroll down, you get a dude just like, bro. And then an explosion. And then the caption reads, they all died because they underestimated the complexity of the programming the end what a comic so if you want more scrolling down here we've got you know a bunch of what, naughty nurse fucks a patient what, what what's going on what's going on here what look at it, it just keep what it just keeps going big, twitch big tit massive oh my god what's it what's happening it's okay no okay rupert pupkin yeah okay uh joaquin phoenix and makeup you know pretty good this is all supposed to be test images though so it's not like real uh joker stuff but you know it was a cool little first look for anybody that was interested in seeing something can you shut up with that i don't need you playing the music man you're gonna get me in trouble man so that was a little bit of kyle's uh bing my bong little bit of oh no oh no the stroganoff uh tutorial because i was like how do i do this again earlier today okay number five have you ever loved no it says have you or a loved one been diagnosed with mesothelioma bro i think this is a joke because there are so many commercials that start with that. Because if so, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Oh my God. Number four. If you could ask the universe one question and get the absolute truth, what would you want to know? I'd make it a two-part question. And it would be, yeah, what fucking happens when we die, dude? Where do we go? Do we continue? Does our consciousness continue after we die? And where do the aliens closest to us fit into all of this? I just want to know. I just want to know. Someone says, what's the most important thing that you should know? Or what? what's the most important thing that I should know that I'm able to comprehend yet I do not know right now? Why well, stop there? Say, what, what may I have all the knowledge on a goddamn hard drive of the things that I don't know? 
um, or that are being held from me? May I have an account of history as it actually occurred, not as uh, we are, are, are convinced into believing, my dude. I think it's fucked up that so much of our real history is kept from us and exists right now in closed, behind closed doors and libraries and in basements and in cellars and, 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 and in the fucking bunkers and, and pff, vaults of people that are wealthy and want to keep that shit nice and nice and locked up, baby. I don't need to know what happened. Just keep living your life, baby. Number three, if you had the power to quit working, what would you spend tomorrow doing? The same thing I do every day, Pinky. Trying to put a smile on somebody's face. Yay. Yay. Hmm. Number two. When I was still dating my husband, I asked him, if you could see one measurement or statistic over everyone's heads, what would you want it to indicate? And his answer was how happy they are. I feel like that told me a lot about the kind of person he is. Oh, still dating my husband as in when before we got married. Cute. That's a really that's a really great answer. So I will say that my answer is the same. I'm stealing that answer. Ladies, you want to marry this? <laughs> you got to show me them skills in the kitchen. <laughs> your mouth skills. <laughs> when you on your knees. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. Thank God this channel stays so invisible that I'm not like pissing off feminists because they wouldn't have patience to get to this point in the film. In the film, <laughs> it's a fucking video. The funny part was, I think I was 30 minutes in when I thought to myself, you know, this video isn't long enough. I should find another list to do. And now we're an hour and 20 minutes into the video. How the fuck do we get this far? Jesus Christ. Hour and 20 minutes. Think about that. That's 60 minutes plus 20 minutes, my dude. What am I doing? No wonder I'm getting like crazy. You you guys don't want to listen to this anymore. I love you. I should have kept this shorter. My bad. When I was still dating my husband. Mm, good for her. She put a ring on it. Or the other way around. Number one. My boyfriend is an assistant manager at a bookstore. So when he is giving interviews for jobs, instead of asking someone what their favorite book is, he asked them what book did they hate? First of all, no one expects that question. Everyone is used is used to being asked their favorites. So you get more genuine answers instead of a scripted one. Also, I think you can tell a lot from a person from what they dislike. I'll tell you what the what the worst what my least favorite book that I ever read was. It was The Hunger Games. Um whatever the first one was. Because I tried to get into it. I genuinely tried. And you know what else? I've read Twilight not like a lot of it, but like a bit of the first book. But with Twilight, <clears throat> yes, it's man manipulative, but so is a lot of literature that's targeted at a certain demographic. The author knows exactly who they're catering to. This is exactly for a certain type of motherfucker. And like the bottom line is, even though it is kind of cheap in how it goes after certain people in a certain, uh, in a, in a certain mindset, it's not like deceptive in a way where the people who are reading it don't know exactly what the fuck they're getting you ever see like a commercial or or like a trailer for a rom-com like a romantic comedy and it's just some bullshit that's been done before and you know exactly how that movie's gonna play out without even having to see it and you could tell at a glance that it's just a bucket of shit and you'd be stupid to want to go see it but the bottom line is somebody paying for the motherfucking tickets homie somebody is going to see those romantic comedies and the bottom line is they also have seen a, a rom-com once in their life. They've been around a goddamn block. You know what I mean? It's like the sitcom of movies. They know what's going to happen, but they're still going to see it. And I think in, as it contrasts books, uh, that's what Twilight is. So I can't be that mad at Twilight because she targeted that audience and she fucked them up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just like sometimes you see somebody with a YouTube channel and they are just a piece of crap, my dude. Before the video even begins, you're telling, you can tell that you're just going to hate this guy, you know? 
And not just because they're shilling with whatever sponsors or they're trying to make people subscribe under false pretenses like, oh, man, I'm giving away a, a fucking car. Nigga, all you got to do is is be the 15th person to like this video. But you got to be subscribed to my Twitter and my Facebook and you got to leave a comment there and all this bullshit. Like, look, the bottom line is the bottom line is when I read the motherfucking Hunger Games, I was bored and I was insulted. I feel like when you fucking, when you fucking make something that is meant to be consumed as far as media is concerned, whether it's a book, whether it's a movie, whether it's a television show, the least you can do is be entertaining. And the worst you can do is not be entertaining, my dude. You want to know why Justice League has a fucking reputation of being one of the worst movies out there, homie? It's because it is transparent the way that they don't give a shit about this, okay? With Transformers, my dude, there's a certain amount of effort that's put into it to at least be a goddamn spectacle. Whether it's nauseating past a certain point, whether you don't care, whether it's so excessive that you're just like, oh my god, it's better than fucking nothing, my dude. It's better than fucking nothing. And the book of the Hunger Games, at least initially, it was insultingly transparent in what it was trying to go after, but it wasn't willing to earn it in the same way that the Justice League movies weren't willing to earn what the Avengers earned with their 10 years. You know what I mean? Not 10 years up until the Avengers officially happened, but they had movies. They had three Iron Man movies. They had a Thor. They had a Hulk. You know what I mean? They had a Captain America. They were building this stupid shit from the beginning. Yeah, they probably had boring movies. The first Captain America is, well, that's the first Captain America, dude. Thor's all right. It ain't the best. Thor 2, we don't even talk about, homie. But the bottom line is they laid that groundwork and they earned the fucking, they earned what they got to. Justice League is basically just like, they got it too, we want it now. And while you're watching the movie, you can fucking tell. Right from the beginning, you can fucking tell. My favorite thing in that movie in Justice League, if y'all haven't seen it, I'm not going to say spoiler because it doesn't matter. If you haven't seen Justice League, don't watch it. It's bad, my dude. Don't watch it. It's bad. Look up a YouTube video where the, it's like the fight scenes or whatever. And then at the end, when they all get together, oh my God. But the bottom line is this. In the beginning of the movie, Batman is fighting a, some random demon dude. And when he kills him, uh, he explodes into an imprint on the wall of these three cubes. And the three cubes are the MacGuffin in the movie. They're like the big bad uh, item. You know, they're basically the Infinity Stones of the DC Universe. But the, the comical aspect of it is it would be as if when... I don't... Like you're fighting a pirate, and when he dies, he just explodes into a treasure map. You know what I mean? It was just fucking crazy. That movie was AIDS. That movie was visual AIDS. It was a transparent cash grab, slap in the face. You bought this crap, you a fool suck my balls type experience and that's how i felt reading the hunger games that's all i have to say you know i didn't get far in it i'm sure it gets better but you know people say that about the walking dead too that it gets better you know they fired the dude that made the walking dead great with that season one season two is aids they just sit on a damn farm or whatever season three gotta be better because season two was aids but of course, over time, the show has fallen to crap. So who's still watching The Walking Dead? People who like abuse. The same people who still play in fucking Destiny. I bet you while people play Destiny, they're out here talking about their favorite episode of Walking Dead. Because y'all niggas crazy. My point is, my point is, I will not be insulted, my dude. Like, I, I bet you can never think of a time that you've ever wanted to, like, walk out of a theater, you know? But you can definitely think of a show that you were watching and thinking, this shit ain't for me. You know, you can think of who it is for, but it's not for me. But you ever watch something and figure, my God, how stupid do they think the person watching this shit is? You know, how much they going to spell out? How how transparent, how obvious is is what they're stealing from source material wise? You know, I, I can't watch something. I can't read something and be able to physically imagine 
the executives sitting in a room going, All right, guys, we need a Harry Potter, but but not Harry Potter. So uh, pitch me a story that's like that, but not that. Like, nigga, what? Oh, no. <laughs> it's a bad starting point. So there are the ramblings of your old man, Kyle, for today. Um, you know, I didn't want it to end too early, but now it's too late. Oh boy. I'm thinking about diving back into uh, Fallout. Y'all know what I got? Let me show you what I got. <sighs> Let me show you what I got and hope everything don't crash. Uh oh. Let me show you what I got. Okay. Warframe, you know, why am I in a fucking, you know, I just started the game again. Um, put that above that. New alert marked on navigation, okay. Tenno. Where is my remote? I need that to see the real TV because I'm only looking the system through the, continues uh, to fall. Maybe I can just look through this. Here's what I got today. Oh no, motherfucker. Oh no! You know? Okay, I don't see my... I don't see my remote. Give me a second. Hmm? Hmm? There you go. Okay. Warning, read before playing. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I give this the ability to go through my um what I'm thinking of what I'm thinking of doing is uh is like getting into the chats in Uno and giving people hell I'm not gonna do that tonight it would be crazy it would be crazy this has reached its natural conclusion. I do love you, and you guys will see me soon. Though. And I hope you have a fantastic night. <laughs> but um, I just want to thank you all for being who you are. I want to thank my hardcore sponsors for being as incredible and motivational as anyone could dream of anyone being. I want to thank my patrons for helping me make it, helping me make it through. And not least, do I want to thank my man, Banal Vulgarian. I want to thank Prelude. And I want to thank Armando Colasso for their donations tonight. Way to be badass, man. Silver Fox, I appreciate you for that super chat. And tonight, I was as pleased to be in all of your presence as hopefully you were to be in mine. Stay amazing. And have a great night. Bye.